Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, BBC Brigade uh, meeting. Uh, just a quick reminder that the meeting is being recorded, so be mindful of uh, it there. Uh, we have three topics on the agenda. Uh, the first one uh, is a Jira review, but uh, I'll suggest that we do that uh, as a last item. Uh, and I wanted to quickly uh, talk about uh, BBR. Zdravko, can I mute you? Because there is a lot of people coming from your side. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I wanted to briefly talk about BBR and then uh, uh, William wanted to discuss a little bit Volta 2090, for which he probably found a bug uh, in, uh, in the code. Uh, as you know, we discussed about BBR uh, two weeks ago uh, and Keita came up uh, with a pretty good proposal that was uh, um, summarized uh, here in this document. Um, starting from that proposal, uh, I made some small changes in BBSIM uh, to simplify the code, uh, and then I created the first uh, draft of uh, BBR. Changes I made in BBSIM were uh, uh, mostly to change the uh, DHCP and the uh, EPOL responder, so they don't need to um, to listen on a channel, but they are a, a very simple synchronous function that are called from the main uh, ONU thread. In that way, it's um, it's way easier to uh, to build a, sim a simulator that just use that thread to send and receive messages. Um, I push the patch uh, on Garrett. Uh, if someone wants to take a look, uh, it's a I know it's a pretty big patch, so it can be annoying, but I tried to uh, comment everything. Uh, if there is something that can be improved, then I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, just let me know. Um, but it, it would be great if someone can go through the, uh, through the patch and take a look. Uh, I'm going to prepare today uh, a Jenkins job uh, to run BBR so that we can collect some, uh, uh, some meaningful uh, information out of it. But so far I did few runs with 64 ONUs uh, on four PON ports and 16 ONU per PON ports. Uh, and that is a pretty stable scenario, it generally completes around in, in around three seconds. When we scale things up, uh, going to 128 ONUs or more, um, we see that the time increase, um, but we also uh, we also arrive to a situation that is not as stable. Uh, I'm still investigating the issue, but what appears to be is that after a, a certain limit, uh, the DHCP server that is inside BBC stop responding to messages, so we get only. Uh, all the new arrives into the DHCP states, all of them sent out the first DHCP packets, but only some of them would get the uh, the replies from the server, and so only some of them will run to completion. Uh, but as I said, I'm still investigating the, uh, the root cause of this. Is there any question about it? or any comment? I have one question about the test uh, test you did. Uh, when you try to run BBSIM with phone uh, pom ports uh, with 64 uh, or use per port. So how long does it take from the start of the simulation to the end of, to the, to the complete, complete completion of the DHCP uh, IP allocations and uh, you know authentication. So four uh, point ports uh, and sixteen on news. Yes, right. That that's completes in a, that's sixty four total. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, okay, got it. 
That takes around yeah. three seconds. Um, sorry, seconds? Yeah, th that takes around three seconds. Three seconds? Oh, really? Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So I, I have it actually running here. I think you can uh, uh, see my screen. Uh, so I'm running BBSIM in the bottom um, uh, in the bottom panel. As you can see, I started it with 16 news and 4 pon port, uh, and BBSIM confirms that it's creating that numbers. Uh, if I now go and run BBR with the same numbers, it is uh, um, enabling everything and waiting for the 64 news to get into the DHCP act received state. Uh, and that took 2 point something, 2.8 seconds, so basically 3 seconds. Hey, hey Matteo, are you sharing your screen? Because I don't see anything. Oh. Okay. That's very good. Just about to <laughs> same screen on my side. Okay, <laughs> give me a second. Uh, I'm also wondering why, <laughs> why, you, why you didn't share your screen. Yeah, sorry guys, it's... Uh... Okay, can you see my screen? I just see a nice background of an island. Yeah, yeah just background. Okay, let me figure this out, because I updated my laptop yesterday. And now it was complaining about some kind of permission that I should give this guy. Um. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, okay, apparently I'm not capable of sharing my screen. Uh, I'm gonna blame Apple for this, uh, but I'm going to send you a screen capture uh, on the mailing list so that everyone can uh, can see the demo. You can just mm, download the patch and uh, and try to uh, to replicate it. Um, there is a in the patch there is a readme file uh, that uh, lists the commands to uh, to run bbr so it should be uh, fairly easy to uh, to get it to run hey matteo this is william yep um you hear me all right all right uh, i i had a question about bbr because i'm not really familiar with it. I didn't. Um, so when I guess it's, is it, it's, I assume it's talking OMCI to the ONUs. To yeah. what degree, like how much does it work does it actually do? Like compared to say the ONU adapter? Uh, so this, um, uh, it's basically sending uh, canned messages uh, to, uh, to BBCM. Um, it's basically uh, just uh, setting up the minimal information that that BBC needs to uh, needs to run um, I'm using a library uh, that cheap bowling wrote to generate the messages uh, so it's starting with the MIB reset uh, that we are generating and then it goes into the uh, MIB upload sequence and exchange uh, 300 messages there uh, and then it just goes okay. create gem port. But yeah, roughly it's 300 messages per ONU that is emulating. Okay, cool. 
So we, we don't really care about the content of the messages uh, in BBSIM because there is no real avenue to configure, but we wanted yeah. to have an, a number of messages that was somewhat meaningful. Yeah, yeah. And that's about that's about how much I've seen with the real ones. So that seems good. Yeah, so basically the BBSIM uh, OMCI simulator library that Shad wrote uh, came from uh, a, down, a packet dump of a real revenue. And now to get BBR to okay. work with BBC, I had to reply to the same messages, so it should be pretty similar to a physical case. OK, thanks. That makes sense. OK, if there aren't any more questions, um, I think we can move on to uh, Vol 2090. Uh, do we want to speak about that, William? Uh, sure. Um, so um, someone wanted me to test some behavior, and I, I was looking and I found that the ONUs and the NubiB sim, I didn't see them all show up in AAA. And what I discovered was um, there's some state transition issues with the gem port edit message. Um, if people, I mean, if I, if I share my screen, I can show you what that was. But um, basically, you, uh, you could look up code in the Slack, especially that. Um, two things. One, it, uh, it can pick up messages for their own use. And I confirmed this. I modified the logs to the serial number as well as other things. And they didn't match up. But also, I see it's one channel to OMCI sim. Um, and from I see, I tested this, and I also read about this. Um, only one of the ONUs actually picks up a given message. So is it, you're not guaranteed that the one you want will go where will end up where it needs to be. So I could show with the logs, but um, it's pretty it's pretty easy to reproduce if you just do 16 and check and check look for errors in the log. I mean, I don't need to do quite 16, but you know, um, I basically I mean. You see, one of the solutions this I think made sense was have the OLT forward work on you. That would work. The other option I think would be to, to put more than one channel in OMCI system and pit, farm it out, but the OLT method might be better. Yeah, I, I, I agree that moving that listener in the OLT and then dispatch the message will, uh, will be the right way to go. But yeah, I, I, okay. haven't, I um, haven't ever investigated it. Uh, but if you look into the readme file of BBCM, there is a non issues uh, section at the bottom. And I think the issue that is listed, listed there is the one you're talking about. Oh, really? I, never, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's, not a, it's just a note that I took at a certain point. I should have created the Jira instead of uh, scratching it on a well, on file. I, would, I, I wouldn't guarantee that. I wouldn't guarantee that. I would have looked seen in Jira either, but <laughs> um, just you know, Jira. Uh, okay, yeah, yep, that's exactly it. Um, yeah, that, that's the one I think I've figured out, or I mean, I've investigated, and I, th I can try out trial a solution for it. And okay, see if I can, fix uh, it. can you also create a Jira for it, or uh, do we want uh, we can track it under a twenty? Uh, I mean, I I made a Jira. And I have this error message in the Jira. Do you want me to link those two things? No, no, that's that's fine. We can. Uh, uh, is that twenty ninety or another? Uh... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's twenty ninety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's perfect. We we can use that one to uh, to track this fix. Cool. Um. And that's all I have on it. I'll I'll try and see if I can make the OLT handle that. Cool. The okay. channel. Um, yeah, I mean for me, I I'm doing scale testing is with the overall system. So I have like a modified open O and U I have to do some things in parallel. Um so that's that's how I'm doing this. Um, but and I, I've been doing this mostly in regards to the whole system. I haven't actually found BBSIM to be the performance issue. Is, it's always been pretty good, either old one or this one. Um, but this one, I'm just finding stability issues. 
this one doesn't actually affect performance testing for me, but I ran into it, so. Yep. Well, that's all I have. Um, Uh, I think we we'll lost you, William, if you were a second. Oh, oh uh, you said that. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It, I, was, it, I, was, I wasn't sure if my volume had gone away. But yeah, that's all I had. Okay, cool. Um, okay, the last thing I wanted to quickly go through was to uh, do a little bit of a Jira review. Uh, but I think Jira is a, a pretty much in uh, in a good state um, there are a few items um, that still need to be uh, verified uh, with the new BBC um, there are four of them uh, disabling the open OLT in BBC doesn't disable the OI news and I'm going to take this one on uh, and then we have uh, a reboot device in BBC need fix uh, that is that was assigned to Salman Siddiqui. Uh, does anyone know Salman? Yeah, I know him. Oh, okay. He's from. Yeah. Okay, and is uh is he based with you? Or, uh, is, uh... No, no, he's based in, in Bangalore. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, what uh, do you have a question or a comment? Uh, uh, no, um... just the, there is an um, an issue assigned to him that is Vol nineteen fourteen. Yeah. Um, that has a verify label because uh, we need to check if that's still an issue with the with the new BBC. Uh, but I would say that we don't have the reboot uh, capabilities in, uh, in BBC yet, so uh, we may need to uh, to wait to verify this one. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, still with the verify label two issues uh, that are assigned to William. Uh, one uh, that is BBC to move to. Act active state takes more than five minutes uh, and the other one is that to uh, to arrive to DHCP complete it takes more than uh, 20 minutes but I think William is uh, uh, while looking at scale is automatically verifying uh, this issue and uh, maybe you can confirm whether these are BBC bottleneck or uh, a Volta issue because in, in case we can probably move these uh, um these stories uh into a stabilization or performance uh brigade uh yeah um i mean the first one with deactivate i didn't i found that it was it, didn't, it was a minute and a half not five minutes um i didn't i didn't think i that was a performance issue to me to me it seemed like i did that that didn't, that didn't seem like an issue to me maybe I mean, there are performance issues, but I'm not sure about that. Take it. And the other one with the HTTP flows, yeah, I haven't verified that one yet because I got sidetracked by this issue I just brought up. Um, but I, I'm going to do that, and then we'll see where we can put it. I'm not. I'm not sure what to do about the activate one. Um, okay, but, but kind of with the performance issue. Uh, well, okay, the performance, the performance issue, the five minutes. Um, the minute, so the minute and a half is too slow, actually, but I don't think it's because of BBC. Um, okay, but I so think it's because of other things. You are still seeing these in uh, Volta to the text with the new BBC. Uh, the first one, sure. The second one with the, with the DHC flows, I haven't verified it yet. Okay. So yeah, I mean, yeah, we can we can mark the first one as as something we need to fix. 
the performance doesn't need to be verified anymore. Um, yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot of discussion about what that means, but for me, uh, as for me, the, the issue is it takes a minute and a half to do 16 when one takes 10 seconds or 15 seconds or something. And I think if you go to 16, they should all still take 10 or seconds or so. It shouldn't be that much longer. Yeah, uh, it, cause it, and I think that's that's the issue. Because it, it it looks somewhat so, that is serialized, like it's activating one at a, at a time. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to drop a comment. So that, that, that's that's definitely an issue. Yeah. Okay. Um so then uh, I was looking um, at, the, at the issues in progress. Uh, I can speak about uh, mine. Um, basically, one, uh, uh, the first one uh, I have in progress is uh, the device handling uh, story. I implemented the ONU uh, activate deactivate, uh, basically importing the same feature we had in the uh, in the previous BBSIM. Uh, we are still missing the capability to disable uh, an entire an entire uh, pawn or reboot DLT. So there are a few stories uh, that can be picked up. I'm going to add some uh, some subtask. Then the other story that I have in progress is um, is BBR, uh, but I already extensively talked about it, uh, and that's it for me. Um, uh, Zdravko, do we want to quickly go through uh, the items you are working on? Uh, yeah, not too much to update on, on my. S oh, okay, just uh, sorry, I don't have the. Let me just open the log here. So, yeah, I started working on the uh, porting the uh, API from the old BBSIM to the new BBSIM. So, there's nothing to present on that at this point. Uh, one thing I had wanted to ask uh, in the general round is what's the plan for the, for the new API, let's say? Uh, are we aiming to expose again uh, a REST API in addition to the gRPC uh, API as well, or, or is there some uh, some yeah, something against that? Uh, I don't have any good reason against it. Uh, so if mm -hmm. there is a need for it, uh, I'm totally fine with with exposing it because that would influence kind of the way that yeah. The, the old one supported as well. Okay, so I'll look at that. Um, in addition, I had uh, just, sorry, I, I don't have the the dashboard open here. Uh, um, yeah, so, so there was a very old one, which uh, I'm not sure if that's the other one that you're referring to. I think yeah, that's uh, the KPI generation. Yeah, and also the. Um, Is that and yeah. the gem port validation through API? Yeah, so th so those two one those two ones were yeah those were still kind of from from a couple of months ago actually, and they are implemented and they all be with them again, uh, and that's that's part of that review that that you went through yesterday, um, so the code is there and and it's been committed for a couple of uh, months ago, so it would be good if we could just merge that into the old 
we be swim and then we, uh, yeah, at some point we need to basically recreate these stories and and uh, add it to the to the new BB swim as well. Okay, yeah, I'm. Uh, um... I've seen the patch for one of those that was Siba 758. Uh, I can go ahead and look up the other one for Siba 790. Yeah. Oh, okay, I found the patch, so I'm going to take a look at these two. Um, the one for Siba 750. Oh, I think they are both in the same patch. Uh, yeah, uh, not just for that. That was yeah, it's uh, it was complicated. So it was a, a big, it was it was a big uh, patch, uh, which had a kind of a, several fixes merged into it. So yeah, yeah, that, that, so that, that's that, no that is, um, Just uh, uh, the um, the unit tests on that patch are failing because uh, Golang is very picky when it does the code linting. Uh, and there is like a format directive that is called without an argument, so it's failing the test. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll have yeah, a that, that should be a very simple uh, fix, but if Jenkins doesn't give a thumbs up, I cannot match the patch. Okay, then looking at the uh, last few things in progress, there are a couple items from uh, uh, Jills uh, about the functional test case for uh, ONU discovery uh, and OLT provisioning and enabling with 16 uh, ONUs on BBC. Uh, is that something you're still working on, Jills? Okay, I thought Gilles was on the line, I think I saw his name, uh, but apparently is not here. So I'm going to uh, touch base with him offline uh, and update this, uh, this story. And this, is, was, this was everything for me. Uh, is there any other uh, topic that we need to discuss? Uh, I see that there are a couple uh, new people on the call uh, uh yes matthew hi shubham here hi welcome yeah thanks uh actually this week i have started looking into bbc code mm -hmm. and uh, so far i have understood the functionality that it makes the devices and using volta cli we enable them and uh, as soon as the devices enables the authentication for OLT is done now I have come up with queries. Uh, actually, in in C app on sim, like we were having RG pod, mm -hmm. and using that RG pod, we were able to trigger subsequent EAPL request. So similar to that, is there any mechanism in BB sim? So in in BB sim. In BBSIM, the uh, EPOL request is automatically triggered um, mm -hmm. once the OMCI messages uh, are completed and the EPOL flow has been pushed to the ONU. So that, okay. that will start automatically. Okay. Same Actually, the ask, for, yeah, the ask for me in BBSIM is to work on the enablement of IGMP. Mm -hmm. So far, yeah. So based on that, I am doing this research, and I was going through this EAPL flow in BBC. So for the approach of IGMP, can I? Because since uh, you you mentioned now that there is no packet or message realignment available, right? So if I want to specifically check the message type of IGMP, then simply I can. Can I implement it in the same way how it's done for EAPL? Uh, that's in onu.go, right? We check for the messages type from the stream and similar to that. Yeah, but uh, so in the IGMP case, uh, it will be 
BBSIM that start uh, the exchange. Is that correct? Uh, that's what I was trying to figure out. Okay, so I, I, I yeah, I'm not terribly confident with uh, IGMP, but uh, I can double check with Sorer. But I believe that uh, uh, is the ONU that a certain point sends uh, an IGMP join or an IGMP leave uh, up to the controller. Um, so if you look uh, in the ONU. Mm -hmm. uh, there should be, uh, let me find the name of the method. Uh, there should be a send ip start method. Uh, okay. That, that is called uh, when, uh, uh, when it, we need to start authentication. I think okay. in a similar way, uh, we can have a uh, send uh, IGMP join that basically generates yeah. uh, a packet and sends it out. Um, and I believe it, it should send it out from the from the stream up to Volta. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. Okay, Matty, I'll look into this poll. And... Uh, yeah, and uh, after IGMP will be uh, say enabled, okay, if it's supported, then when the devices gets attached, when devices gets activated, currently EA poll authentication message is sent automatically. Mm -hmm. So is that going to be the same case for IGMP as well? Um, we can decide about uh, we we can we can decide about it. I think maybe it will make sense to uh, just have an API trigger for uh, IGMP. Uh, I remember I was briefly uh, talking with Sorava and he was saying that it would be nice to have maybe two or three different scenarios uh, for IGMP, like um, send a join to this group, then wait three seconds, send a leave from this group, send a join to this other group, uh, and, and this kind of thing, um, but uh, we can probably um, set up a meeting maybe with Sorava and talk uh, uh, talk about the uh, the implementation more in details if that works for you. Uh, meanwhile, I can okay. try to find out some uh, uh, some more information. Okay, okay, Matthew, and I have one more query actually. Uh, it's related to gRPC endpoints. Okay, in ONU.go, there are certain gRPC endpoints. Uh, but I was not able to figure it out like from where those endpoints have been called. So can you, I mean... Um, in ONU.go, there shouldn't be any gRPC endpoints. Sorry, in OLT.go. Yeah, OLT.go. These uh, endpoints are called, uh, are called from Volta. Okay. So when when you do, um, for example, uh, uh, device enable, mm -hmm. an enable uh, function in OLT is called uh, via gRPC. Okay. Okay, Matthew. And uh, currently, that by default, when we do this setup, VBSIM setup. The default device numbers are one, right? One OLU and one OLT gets yeah. activated. Yeah. Okay, now, correct. for example, say, yeah. For example, I'm having a running setup, and that that setup is already having one instance of ONU and one instance of OLT. Now, can I dynamically add one more, one more ONU, say one more ONU on top of the running instance, uh, running setup? No, as, as now, BBSIM doesn't have that feature. Uh, but it will be it, it will be something uh, interesting to add. Okay. But as now, no, you you have to live with whatever you specified at the beginning. Um, when you start BBSIM, um, you can pass the parameters of how many you can use and how many pawn ports you want to be uh, activated. But it's uh, it's okay. always going to be one LT. 
Yep. Hey, hey, Mateo, is anybody uh, currently working on that feature? This question came up at the at the testing call yesterday as well. Uh, uh, so I think there's interest in, in somebody implementing this. No, uh, at least not that I know of. <laughs> okay. So, sorry, uh, I didn't quite catch the, the feature request. Could you please repeat? So, I think the feature request was to have the ability to dynamically add the, uh, or news to a running BBC. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, no, I'd be interested at some point to add that because this was something that we had in the in the original BBC. So uh, aiming for feature parity that should should be should be added as well. Basically, you specify how many own news the, what the maximum uh, number of own news that are supported can be at the startup, and then you can still. Um, Add them at runtime. Is that the request, or is... uh, I think the request was only to add them uh, at runtime. Uh, then, if there is a need, we can specify the maximum number uh, of when use that BBC should support. For so far, yesterday I found out that there is an issue in BBC when you try to run more than two hundred fifty-six. Uh, um, when you use upon port, um, but that's probably not a big deal. Yeah. Since that's bigger than uh, than the physical limit. Uh, but so I'm, I'm going ahead and create uh, a ticket uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for this feature so we can track it. Uh, and if, in, if there is interest, we can give uh, uh, an higher priority to it. Uh, Andy, can I ask uh, what was the use case in the test uh, brigade for to to add the BB, uh, to add BBC more news at runtime? Um. I don't know if if we really discussed what was the the test case. I think there was just a the question of is that supported. So I mean, we, at Deutsche Telekom, we had the uh, one feature that once we were t testing is to basically to measure the, the activation time, like how long does it take. Uh, does it take uh, Okay, so I guess the the use case is uh, uh, I have five hundred when you're running. I add one more. Uh, how long does that one more takes to activate? Yeah, exactly, and things like you know, let's say there's to simulate all new failures and how how long it takes for them to come back up. All like let's say there's a batch of of when you who disconnect for some reason and come up. To be able to figure out how does Walter respond respond to these kind of events, which you know, can happen. And the use case that came up in the test brigade was, um, <clears throat> I think they what they are doing is um, um, they're taking down the radius server and then bringing it back up again. So previously authenticated. RGs um, behind ONUs would uh, re-authenticate, and then a and then a new ONU would show up, and that too would be able to authenticate. So it's going through a failure scenario of the radius server rebooting or something like that. Okay, that will actually require another feature in BBC that is the ability to restart people for the existing ONUs because we don't have that yet. So if you if you tear down uh, radius, uh, BBC will actually know nothing about it and will not try to authenticate it again. Doesn't the, the draft closed APIs uh, yeah, enable restarting ONU and uh, sorry restarting RG or EAPOL or DHCP on existing ONUs? Um, so, uh, as far as I know, that feature was never there in the old BBC. Yeah, uh, no, 
Uh, we didn't do any work on um, DHCP and EAPOL because, uh, yeah, it's probably not. Oh, DT. yeah, DT doesn't need that, right? Exactly. So you, you have the ability to uh, disable NONU and re enable it, and that will cause the ONU to start EAPOL and DHCP again, but. That's not necessarily the same use case that the test is uh, is designed for, right? But we we already have a story to uh, create a command to restart people and DHCP that should be uh, fairly easy to add because it's basically having an API that change the state in in a new. new. Okay. Okay. Uh, last uh, uh, last quick thing. Uh, Shubham and Darion, if you are going to work on BBCM, uh, can you please join the mailing list and the Slack channel so communication will be uh, easier between the all of us? Uh, yeah, sure, Matthew. We'll do that. Okay. Great. Sure, Matthew. Uh, also, uh, I have one query regarding the BBCM. So, uh, like uh, while uh, activating the uh, while enabling the ONU and OLT from Volta, it sends a message via gRPC stream, right, to yeah. BBSIM. So, so based on that message, only uh, BBSIM send out the response for each packet, right? Yeah. So the the way it works okay. is that Volta makes uh, uh, a first uh, gRPC call to the uh, well, it, it does a few. It gets the device information and then it calls uh, an enable endpoint. That enable endpoint uh, triggers uh, the OLT to expose a gRPC stream and report it to Volta. Uh, so it's the OLT that is actually acting as a server and Volta is acting as a client on the stream. Um, and then they start sending packets back and forth over that stream. Okay, uh, so uh, me and Shubham both are working on, uh, I'm mean, trying to work on the IGMP part. And for uh, implementing that, we should also send a message type uh, uh, regarding that IGMP towards the BDSIM, right? While enabling the OLT? Um, no, I think it, it will be uh, a sort of a correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think it will be BDSIM to initiate the IGMP exchange. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's right. Okay. I, I the just, joins uh, will come from BBCM, yes. Yeah. IGMP messages are basically no. saying, uh, okay, I'm going to, I'm turning on the TV and I want to join this channel for the multicast group. Uh, so that is the, mm -hmm. the new that is starting that, that communication. Okay. So while I went through the code for BBSIM, I only found out that packets being sent while uh, uh, comparing the each message type. I didn't uh, like uh, found any uh, part in the code where BBSIM sent out the packet first. Okay. Uh, if you look in the um, in the ONU code, there is a send okay. start uh, method. And that, that method okay. is, uh, is, send, is generating an, is the first uh, EPOL packet and sending it out uh, of the stream. Ooh. Okay, all right, thank you. So if you want to ping me on, uh, on Slack sometime, I can just send you the, the link or I can post it here in chat. Yeah, sure, man. Okay, uh, if there isn't anything else, uh, I think we can uh, call this a meeting and get 
15 minutes back. Oh, no, actually, there is one uh, last thing that I wanted to propose. Uh, since we, um, uh, the people working on BBC are uh, increasing a little bit, uh, I'm going to start uh, uh, having the, um, the meeting on a weekly basis uh, so that we have a little more time to, uh, to discuss about issues and features. Because uh, I guess with the uh, IGMP coming in, there will be uh, a little more activity on, uh, on the code base. So I'm going to update the, uh, the calendar and the, uh, and the rolling agenda accordingly. Is there any concern about that? Can anyone hear Matteo? Uh, you're breaking up. Uh, yeah. yeah, it works for me. Yeah, quickly also, quickly also works for me. Okay. Uh, then talk to you next Friday. Does it reflect all the current work going on? And any stories that may have been completed? Uh, what do you mean? The fact that saying, is, yeah, is the dashboard up to date? Uh, yeah, we we just went through Jira. Uh, everything is up. Oh, okay. Cool. So I'm I'm going to talk with you about the dashboard because I want to make some changes because there are too many stories in there. I cannot find what I'm looking for generally, but <laughs> we probably need to okay, back sure back for that. Sounds anyway, good. Thanks everyone for joining. Talk to you next week or before over a Slack and mails. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.